May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat. So I'm not, going, I'm not going to be focusing, per se, on the story of David and Bathsheba, and then they're working out of that, uh, for obvious reasons, I think. However, it occurs to me that much of that story is actually paralleled in what Jesus is pointing people to in the Gospel. <coughs> so, one of the problems in the world today is a very uneven distribution of the resources of the earth. Some people have an incredible amount and other people barely anything. And I believe that this is a problem that Jesus is alluding to when he's talking about hunger. I don't know if, you, if you've ever seen that uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs triangle. And uh, sort of at the bottom is your very basic needs. You need food, or you starve, you need shelter, or you freeze, and you need to, in some ex to some extent, you need, you need people, or you don't get to practice, in a sense, being human. And then it goes a bit higher, so once you've got those needs sorted, you know, you need a night, you need a home, you need uh, status, you need work, you need to be valued, and those sorts of things. And the, whole, and, and the idea is that as you fill in the bottom, and things go higher and higher, you get, in, a, in one sense, more spiritual more connected to God. The problem is this. So many people are actually mentally caught in that very bottom rung, where they are hungry. They want more food, even though they've got plenty. For food, substitute cash. Because with cash you buy food, you buy resources. And so we're actually in many regards stuck on that bottom rung. And it's a competition. Who can get the most stuff? Because they're winning. They are. I mean, just look at the world. This is how you can tell if somebody's winning. They've got the most stuff. But the problem is it's driven by hunger. And Jesus is talking to people and he says, uh, Look. You're following me because I provided you with some food. But you didn't recognize that as a sign. That's important because signs point to things. Right? This, and this is John's Gospel. So all the miracles are pointers. John actually uses the word uh, sign. Well, he doesn't because he's in Greek. But he uses the Greek word for sign. Every miracle points. And they point to God. So Jesus is saying, you followed me for the food, but you didn't see the sign. And so he, he, he tries to tell them the story. Because one of the things with miracles is if, if they're just a signpost, sometimes you need a slightly stronger message. You know, especially if it's a, you know, a warning sign. You know, don't go here, yeah, there's crocodiles. Sorry. I caught up with Paul and Michelle last weekend, and there's some very impressive stories about crocodiles, and they're now living in my brain. Um, <laughs> you know, don't go here, yeah, there's crocodiles. See, the sign, that means one thing. See, the crocodile coming out of the water, smashing into something? It's a different sign, isn't it? <laughs> Paul loved that. <sighs> anyway, um, so Jesus is telling the story. He's trying to explain to them, don't work for food that spoils. You're never going to get out of that trap. You're never going to get off that treadmill. Because the food will always spoil. There will never be enough to fill that hunger. Rather work for that which doesn't spoil. Work for that which uh, lasts. Has within it the quality of eternity. Now eternity is, uh, is not bounded in a sense by death and time. So work for that which is timeless. That's a really important message. It's a very important message. And it's one that we so often don't hear in the world. 
you know, uh, we sell technology and they say this, this piece of technology is going to be tougher than ever. And it's got a built-in use-by date that's often less than a sort of you know, mobile phones. They've designed to break within sort of two or three years. So that's the first thing. We need to get off that treadmill. The world needs to get off that treadmill. We need to start to see the sign as pointing us to God, that which doesn't spoil. And like I said, David and Bathsheba, the problem with David is he had more than enough, but he couldn't get off the treadmill of more, of more, of more. So then what's the sign pointing to? Now, the people come to Jesus, and you'd think that they have a slightly clearer understanding. As I said last week, this very deliberately echoes or reminds us of Exodus. And here the people come to Jesus and they say, well, will you give us more food? Moses gave people food in the wilderness. And you feel like Jesus is going, were you just not there an hour ago when I gave you food? Did you miss that? I mean, that's the only reason you came, and now you want more. And so Jesus says, no, no, Moses didn't give them food. It's not Moses who did it. It's not Moses who went out there and produced manna, summoned quails with his quail whistle. God provides these things. This is the stuff that is eternal. And so we need to then recognize that in order to get off the treadmill of eternal hunger, essentially, of the drive to acquire more, to try and win in the game that the world has set up, is to recognize that we don't have to play. It's to recognize that we don't have to be driven by those things. <coughs> you can just get off the treadmill. It's, it's our choice. Now, a lot, of, a lot of the world's going to want you to get back on because if, you know, if people stop playing, then the system falls apart. If everybody decided, I don't like that game, and we all get off, the system falls apart. And so many people rely on the system to keep going. But God says, there's a better game in town that is more fulfilling in the long run. And that's the eternal game. It's the game where what you're playing for doesn't rot, doesn't go bad, isn't marked or shaped by death. That game is the game of relationship. That game is the game of love. That game is the game that says God loves you. And all God wants is for you to lead a better life. Not necessarily better with more stuff. Because that's just thinking God's playing the, the treadmill game. A better game that has a deeper richness in our relationships with each other and with God. And the journey to relationship is as it has always been. Conversation. Spending time with someone is how you build a relationship with them. Spending time deliberately with God is how we deepen and strengthen our relationship with God. And so the mechanism, if you will, to getting off the treadmill is prayer. Is deliberate time with God. So if we want to follow the signs to a richer life, it's important that we make time in our lives for God and prayer. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.